Welcome to our question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Well, good evening, Chris. So my question is about Nehemiah 8, verse 4. And I just wanted to ask you, what did you take away from that verse where Tezpah is speaking? And then he has six men on his right side, and he has seven men on his left side. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good question. Nehemiah 8, verse 4 says, And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattathiah and Shema and Ananiah and Urijah and Hilkiah and Maasiah on his right hand. And on his left hand, Pedadiah and Misael and Malchiah and Hashem and Hashpadana, Zechariah and Meshulam. Thirteen men. And another list of 13 men is given in verse 7. And we read that they caused the people to understand the law. And so it's twice in just a handful of verses during the Feast of Tabernacles at a time when the law of God is to be taught. Ezra was sent by the king of the Medes and the Persians and given the job to teach the people the law. He was specifically sent for the purpose of teaching the law. So we have a really strong emphasis on reading the law, the word of God, and on understanding the word of God. Maybe there's more of an emphasis on those two things in this chapter than anywhere else in the Bible. It really stands out that he's reading the word and then these 13 men are causing the people to understand. And again and again, the word understand is found in the chapter. And we can't help but notice that all the language here fits in to what happens at the time of the end. As God said to Daniel the prophet, seal up the word till the time of the end and knowledge would be increased. So the word of God was sealed. That is many things that God intended to reveal to his people were kept in reserve throughout the history of the world until the very end of the world. And the end stage of verse history began in the year 1988. That was the end of the church age. And it was the beginning of the great tribulation. And that happened to be the 13,000th year of the world since creation and so 13 men, 13 men caused the people to understand the law. And right around that time, God opens up the scripture and all kinds of doctrinal information have flowed forth since. And we have come to understand just amazing things over the last few decades since 1988. And especially since 1994, the Jubilee year. Well, this whole chapter fits in with the spiritual fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the Feast of the Bible from 1994 and according to biblical evidence until the year 2033. But your question is about 13 men and why they're broken up. It was six on the right hand, seven on the left hand. And isn't it interesting, isn't it interesting that the Bible emphasizes 13,000 years of history and that 13,000 years is broken up, isn't it? It's broken up. When we look at the Old Testament and the biblical calendar of history, we find from creation to the flood, 6,023 years, 6,023 years. And then from the flood to the year 2011, and May 21 was the equivalent date that the flood began. It had the 17th day of the second month of the Hebrew calendar underlying May 21, 2011. And so from the flood date of 4990 to 2011 is 7,000 years. And not only that, but if you go from the flood in 4990 to 2033, it's 7,023 calendar years. So basically, you have the first judgment of the world, 6,023 years. Flood destroys the earth. Second earth from the flood, if we go all the way to 2033, 7,023 calendar years. Fullness of the thousand, then an attached tribulation period, 23 years or 23 calendar years. And a very interesting 6,000, 7,000, two epochs of time, 
six men on the right hand, and that's listed first. Seven men on the left hand. You see, it's an interesting way, an uh, imaginative way for God to divide the number 13 into two numbers, six and seven, that happen to fit the whole timeline for the history of the world. Not only does the number 13 identify to 13,000 years, and then God causes the people to understand, but he breaks it up by just giving us that curious tidbit, six men on the right, seven men on the left. And also keep in mind when Jericho, the walls of Jericho fell down, that Israel was commanded by God, go about the city once a day for six days, six days. Then on the seventh day, go about the city seven times. Again, distinguishing six from seven. Added together, 13 total times around, then the wall falls down. So I think it's beyond coincidence when we learn it from the biblical calendar of history, 6,023 years flood, 7,023 years, we expect the end of the world. And here, six men on the right, seven on the left, and 13 total. And then also with the 13 times around Jericho, it starts to fit a pattern, doesn't it? And the pattern is the end of the world. And we're right in the midst of that pattern. That pattern was not fulfilled on May 21, 2011. It would have been not quite the same. 6,023 years in the Old Testament, May 21, 2011, was 7,000 full years. Ah, but add the world's tribulation, 22 actual years, 23 inclusive, and then you have a perfect match. And not only that, then you add up the two totals, 6,023 plus 7,023, but it's calendar, so you have to minus one, and it totals 13,045 actual years, 13,046 calendar years. Now do the same thing with the first coming of Christ. And, you know, I think this is important, so I'll take a little bit more time. With the first coming of Christ, if you go from creation to the flood, 6,023 years, that stays the same. Then if you go from the flood, uh, date of 4990, to the cross in 33 AD, 5,023 calendar years. So in this case, you have 6,023 up to the flood, followed by 5,023 calendar years, and God fulfilled the demonstration of the cross, didn't he? That time path was fulfilled, and in total amount, 6,023 plus 5,023 calendar years equals 11,045 actual years, 11,046 calendar years. Perfect match. Only separated when we come to the year 2033, it'll be a duplicate. It will be the mirror image of the flood timeline to the cross and creation to the cross. It'll be the mirror image creation to 2033, the flood to 2033. These timelines for anybody who thinks, oh, we came to May 21, 2011, and all the timelines, all the major timelines pointed to that date and now nothing else. And no, no, there are more proofs, more major timelines to the year 2033 than I think any other year. 2011, 1994, there are more significant timelines going to 2033 than I would say both of those years combined. Only with May 21, 2011, God locked in that particular date. And we haven't seen that with any specific date in the year 2033. But as for the year itself, it is standing out like no previous year before it. And it's strong biblical evidence. We can say that it's mounting biblical evidence. That will be the year the world ends. But, you know, we have to keep studying. <laughs>